Micrium's Micro-C Probe is a unique tool that helps take the mystery out of developing embedded systems. With Micro-C Probe, you no longer have to speculate about what might be happening inside the development board sitting on your desk. You can actually see changes in the board's code as they happen. While some tools for embedded systems can be incredibly difficult to use, you can begin realizing the benefits of Micro-C Probe in just a matter of minutes. In this video, we will take a look at the simple procedure for instantiating one of Micro-C Probe's graphical components and using that component to monitor the value of a variable. To reproduce what you will see in the video, you will need the following. A development board with a JTAG interface, a JLink JTAG emulator, a compiler capable of producing ELF output files, and application code that runs on your board. For the remainder of the video, we will assume that your board and PC are connected via your JLink, and that code is actually running on the board. After you have made sure that your setup meets these conditions, you can start Micro-C Probe. At the center of Micro-C Probe's main program window is a data screen, an area onto which we can drag and drop graphical components that represent variables in running code. Before we populate the data screen with any components, we will provide Micro-C Probe with an important piece of input, the ELF file that our compiler generated when our code was built. We can specify the location of our ELF file by first clicking the Open Symbol File button located in the upper left-hand corner of Micro-C Probe's Symbol Browser. We can then simply browse to the file and click Open. Once we've supplied Micro-C Probe with the ELF file, the name of this file will appear in the Symbol Browser. If we click the arrow in front of the name, a list of C files will appear. We will return to this list momentarily. For now, though, we will take a look at the toolbox located to the left of the Symbol Browser. At the bottom of the toolbox are several categories of graphical components. Linear gauges, horizontal linear gauges, quadrant gauges, and more. If we click one of these categories, semicircle gauges for instance, a list of the different components in that category will appear at the top of the toolbox. We will now drag a component out of the toolbox and drop it onto our data screen. Typically, the components in a Micro-C Probe data screen represent the variables in a piece of embedded software. We can make an association between a component and a particular variable using the symbol browser. With our new component selected, we will now click the arrow beside one of the C files in the symbol browser's list. This will cause the browser to display each of the variables declared in that file. We will associate one of the variables with our component by double-clicking the variable's name. Ultimately, Micro-C Probe will update our component using a JTAG connection to a running board. We will now verify that JTAG is set as the communication protocol in Micro-C Probe's options. The options can be accessed via the file menu. We must make sure that Seger JLink is highlighted and that an appropriate interface mode has been selected. With the correct options set, all that we need to do to begin using Micro-C Probe to monitor the value of our variable is to click the Run button in the upper left-hand corner of the main program window. After a brief pause, our component will begin changing to reflect the underlying variable's value. A simple data screen like this one gives us a glimpse inside an embedded system. You can repeat the steps laid out in this video to instantiate more components and put together a richer graphical interface for your hardware platforms. In no time at all, you will be looking at embedded systems development in an entirely new way.